On January 24, 2017, the committee formally initiated its inquiry into Russian active measures in the 2016 elections and the Intelligence Community Assessment, ICA, relating to Russian involvement in the 2016 elections. The terms of reference designated a Russian active measures working group from committee staff to conduct the inquiry on behalf of the committee. The five volumes of the committee's report capture the results of three years of investigative activity, hundreds of witness interviews and engagements, millions of pages of document review, and open and closed hearings. This report presents the committee's findings and recommendations as a result of its investigation. The Committee's Power to Investigate The Committee's Power to Investigate Russian Interference in the 2016 U.S. Elections derives from its jurisdiction over the Intelligence Community, IC, and Congress's broad investigative powers. The Supreme Court has recognized that Congress has broad power to investigate because investigation is, quote, inherent in the legislative process, close quote. Congress's, quote, power of inquiry is as penetrating and far-reaching as the potential power to enact and appropriate under the Constitution, close quote. Congress also plays the long-established informing function that the Supreme Court has described as indispensable. The Senate created the Select Committee on Intelligence in 1976 to, quote, provide vigilant legislative oversight over the intelligence activities of the United States, close quote, and to ensure that intelligence activities were, quote, in conformity with the Constitution and laws of the United States, close quote. The committee is tasked with oversight of the IC, which includes 17 different intelligence elements and numerous intelligence programs. An assessment of the IC's response to the foreign intelligence threat from Russia, and by necessity, the nature of that threat, fell within the committee's jurisdiction. The report's five volumes covering topics of election security, social media, policy response, the ICA, and counterintelligence concerns surrounding the 2016 elections address areas of oversight and potential legislative action for the committee or Congress. The committee has already taken legislative action based on its investigation. The committee understood obstruction of its investigation to also be within its investigative purview, as efforts to obstruct the committee could potentially stem from additional counterintelligence concerns interfere with its oversight responsibilities, or form the basis of additional legislative action. The committee reviewed relevant intelligence products, conducted voluntary witness interviews, and compelled both testimony and the production of documents when necessary. The committee's investigative power was bounded by the tools available to the legislative branch and the statute governing the enforcement of Senate subpoenas, both of which informed the committee's approach to obtain voluntary cooperation wherever possible. If a witness refused to comply with a subpoena without asserting any valid legal privilege, the committee could choose to pursue either criminal or civil contempt. As the Supreme Court has recognized, the power to compel testimony and evidence is a necessary component to Congress's ability to fulfill its constitutional role. However, holding a witness in contempt of Congress is a multi-step, time-consuming process requiring action both within Congress and the courts. To pursue civil contempt, the committee would begin by issuing a valid subpoena to a witness and providing the witness an opportunity to assert legitimate privileges, along with legal authorities and rationale for any privilege assertions. After a ruling by the chairman and vice chairman that the witness had failed to comply or to assert a valid legal privilege, the committee could override the objection and direct the witness to comply. If the witness failed to comply, the committee could then vote to report a resolution to the Senate, accompanied by a report explaining the facts at issue and the reasons the committee was pursuing civil contempt as opposed to criminal contempt. Reporting a resolution to the Senate is considered a privileged motion and would trigger a vote of the full chamber. If the Senate agreed to the enforcement resolution, the Senate would direct Senate legal counsel to represent the committee before a federal court, seeking an order directing the witness to appear, produce documents, or to answer specific questions. The federal court could then decide to direct the witness to answer, and the court could impose sanctions to further compel compliance if it determined them to be necessary. Title 28, United States Code, Section 1365, 
gives the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia original jurisdiction over civil enforcement of Senate subpoenas. However, Section 1365 does not apply, and the court would not have jurisdiction under the statute to consider an enforcement action if the subpoena is to, quote, an officer or employee of the executive branch of the federal government, close quote, and the refusal to comply is, quote, based on a governmental privilege or objection, the assertion of which has been authorized by the executive branch of the federal government, close quote. This limitation had important practical implications for the committee's investigation. During the committee's investigation, if a subpoenaed witness was a government official and asserted a claim of executive privilege, no matter how specious that claim appeared, the committee was effectively foreclosed from pursuing civil contempt under Section 1365. The committee interviewed several witnesses who refused to answer questions based on potential claims of executive privilege during the presidential transition, involving the White House Counsel's Office, WHCO, which further complicated the potential for enforcement. In some cases, the committee's ability to obtain voluntary document production, including vast amounts of electronic communications, some of which would have been encrypted, appeared to outstrip the tools of law enforcement. But in other cases, it was clear that the limited tools available to the legislative branch hindered a more thorough effort. For example, the committee spent months trying to obtain email communications hosted on a domain related to one of Paul Manafort's businesses, DMP International, LLC. Despite subpoenas issued to individuals and corporate entities, including DMP International, LLC, and Rackspace, which hosted the DMP email server during the relevant time frame, the committee failed to obtain the email communications. Conversely, law enforcement would have been able to, and did, use its criminal investigative authorities to access the content of those email communications directly and without delay. Locating witnesses also proved to be complicated in some cases. Witnesses were spread across the globe and often used different names or changed lawyers in a manner that made engagement with them increasingly challenging. The committee is grateful to the U.S. Marshal Service for its assistance in locating and serving several witnesses throughout the investigation. 